living that life. We just living that life. Talking plus living that life. Listening to the Living That Life Digital Nomad Podcast. Hit the subscribe button on iTunes if you're a boss, and check out the YouTube channel for dope travel videos. Three, two, one, and we are live. The one and only Sean Ogle. What's up, man? Not much. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's crazy. So, real quick introduction for my audience that doesn't know. Flashback 2013, 2014. I am sleeping on the couch, living in a one-bedroom studio apartment with my buddy Parker, and I am reading LocationRebel.com. I'm getting going all down the digital nomad wormhole, and I'm reading <laughs> Sean's blog post, and I'm reading how he does this master guide about how to, how to be a blogger and how to start a business online and how to work from anywhere and how to get guest posts and build your brand. And oh my gosh, flash forward <laughs> three, four years, and now he's on my youtube channel slash podcast so yeah it's uh, really cool to have you on here and um yeah so for people that don't know sean he's been in the, he's an og in the game og digital nomad and he's all about uh you know he's traveled all around the world and he's all about kind of like what i'm about now helping other people get into the online game whether it's freelancing or starting your own business or starting like a hobby hacking business any way that you can Take your dream of working from your laptop. Any way to make that a reality, that's what Sean's about. And he was one of the one of the guys very early that really kind of drove us forward. And I'm, I'm case in point. Now I've just been sharing my journey on YouTube for the past two and a half years. So, um, yeah, for people that don't know you and are not followers, I guess, real quick, like, what's your story? How did you get into the whole online game? Yeah, it was kind of by accident in a lot of ways. So I grew up with like the most average middle class America upbringing. Like I always took the easy path. I always knew what was next. So when I was in sixth grade, I knew I was going to go to Oregon State University and I was going to study finance. You know, I I knew I was going to live with my best friend in the dorm. Six months before I graduated, I had a job lined up. I knew I was going to move to Portland and start working in finance. And I was stoked for the whole like suit and tie thing. I was like, sweet, I'm finally getting a real job. I had like an office with a view. Um, You know, I was doing pretty well for someone right out of school. But it took about six months to realize that the whole like suit and tie thing actually kind of sucked. Like that wasn't really what I was doing. To make matters worse, you know, this was I graduated June of 2007. So, you know, top of the market. So by like February 2009, like stock market had collapsed. We worked for a small company, a small money management firm. You know, our clients lost money. My boss was like super unhappy and stressed. I was unhappy. So I finally, I saved up all my vacation time for a year. And me and one of my best friends, we went down to Rio for Carnival. Yeah. And it was like the first big trip I'd taken in a couple of years. And we were down there for two weeks. We went like hang gliding over Rio. We went down to Iguazu Falls, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. We went dancing in the carnival parade, had the like ridiculous, stupid looking costumes. Um, it was like one of the best trips of my life. And yeah. on the last day, we're sitting on Copacabana Beach. We're like sipping coconuts. We're getting ready to go back to like the real world where it was like <laughs> snowing and miserable in Portland. And we're like, dude, we should be able to do this whenever we want. Like yeah. we should be able to like live on our own terms and do it whenever we want. And so that that was kind of like what set the stage for what would eventually become Location Rebel. I came back. The day I got back, I actually got a 20% pay cut. My boss wow. was like, there's only four, four people in our company. And he's like, we can either give everyone 20% pay cuts or we can let you go. <laughs> we decided to, you know, give you pay cuts. Um, and so, like, two months after that, uh, or actually it was a couple weeks after that, Chris Gillibo, like, an even more, like, OG in kind of the digital nomad, yeah, yeah. you know, location independent space, moved to Portland. I sent him an email, said, hey, is there any chance I can buy you a cup of coffee? And I had to like lie to my boss, tell him that I had a, a doctor's appointment and, you know, show up in the like the most hipster neighborhood of Portland in this ill-fitting suit and tie. And Chris just starts laughing at me. <laughs> uh, but it was like it was that meeting. He was the one that encouraged me to start a blog. He's like, yo, like start a site, uh, you know, do it to hold yourself accountable for all of these things that you want to do in your life. And so, you know, two months later, May of 2009, I started the blog and that, you know, kind of started it all. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's so similar to me and similar to so many digital nomads that I've met over the last like three years. It's that little travel bug, that little two-week trip, T-O-O-W-E-A-K, like they say in the four-hour work week. It's just, it's for me, it was a two-week trip to Thailand in 2013, like a year after graduating college, and I was just like, that was way too short. Like, what? Like, this is so cool, so interesting. 
And then uh, personally for me, I, I started watching a lot of YouTube. I cut the cable. Me and Parker moved into this apartment together. We cut the cable. And through watching YouTube, we found people like you, people like Johnny FD, people like Jabril from Passport Heavy, like just working from wherever, just traveling the world. And uh, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Um, so something I like about uh, your blog is um, <clears throat> one of the biggest tips you have is start a blog. Like, and I don't talk about that enough because it was a really big thing for me too. Even before I was a digital nomad, I created a blog called livingthatlife.com. And I would just write about my dreams, like write about how location independence is so cool. Like even before I did it, um, was actually doing it. So for people watching who want to get started, if you haven't done that, hey, go ahead and start a blog. Like start writing about what you're passionate about. Start writing about your goals. Another thing that I don't talk about enough on my channel, I think, is the opportunity to work remotely with freelancing. And so uh, Sean is a bit more of an expert on this. And uh, in the uh, link below, you can check a link to his blog article. He breaks it all down, everything you need to get started, essentially. So I want Sean to come on here and kind of give your spiel on um, freelancing and why it can be such a good opportunity for people to get started in the location independent game. Yeah, for sure. So it's one of those things I've been talking a lot lately about the idea of a bridge business. It's like, how do you build a business that's going to make like two to three grand a month, which in turn gives you options. So, you know, for most people, if you're making an extra three grand a month, like that's going to pay most of your bills. That's going to allow you to, you know, have the confidence to say, okay, I can leave my day job and go backpack around the world or focus more full time on the business that I'm really passionate about, or just have a nice little like side income, you know, to help supplement my, my income for my regular job. And I think one of the best kind of bridge businesses is freelance writing. Um, so I kind of walk people through a, kind of a three-step approach to doing this. And I call it the boring way to build an online business because it's not sexy. It's not like you're doing physical products and making money on Amazon. It's not like you're making super passive income through like affiliate marketing or building membership sites. Like that's all the stuff people like want or think they want. But the reality is, is those types of businesses can be, you know, fairly difficult to create if you don't have the right skill sets. It takes time to kind of build up those skills. Um, so what I advocate with freelance writing is kind of, you know, step number one is build the relevant skills. And so I think people should do this by starting a blog or building what I call like your training ground. So, you know, whether it's a blog or whether it's just going through the process of like setting up WordPress in a domain, having a website where you can practice skills like the basics of SEO, copywriting, you know, social media for business, you know, design, you know, basics of design, things like that. Um, and then as you're kind of learning these skills, step two is to freelance one of them. And like I said, most people do freelance writing. So I've found that there's a huge demand for writing out there. You know, even though there's a lot of people trying to do it, some people think it's kind of saturated. There's a lot of different types of writing you can take depending on what your skill set is. So if you're a really proficient writer and you're, you know, you've got kind of a psychology background and, you know, you know how to be persuasive, then, you can make tons of money doing copywriting, helping people write their sales pages or email funnels or things like that. But if you're someone who, you know, maybe you barely graduated call like high school or college, you don't like necessarily have a real strong writing background. You can do SEO writing, which is like lower level, lower paid articles that kind of help build your confidence and start making a little bit of money to, you know, kind of start, you know, building your confidence so that you can go into those higher, you know, paying writing jobs. Um, but that's kind of the, the approach I take. You know, it's like start with the boring way to make money and start like building that income and confidence and then translate it over to something that you're a little bit more passionate about after that. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's uh, I really need to start talking about this more because what I happen to make money with first is selling physical products on Amazon. And so people, when they find me, yep. they're like, oh, Amazon, like that's what I got to do. Like that's the way for me. But realistically, it's not for everyone. It can be difficult. Like your first, second, third product might not even succeed. It takes that upfront capital to, to get it produced and buy that bulk order. Um, but yeah, this can be a very unsexy way. And some people don't want to do the unsexy way, but I'm like, no, guys, like maybe Amazon is not for you. Maybe freelancing is it can be a great way to, yeah, to get over that hump to be able to leave your job. Um, so do you recommend like Upwork or how do people what's the place to go? 
you know, there's so many different ways to do it. You know, Upwork is obviously the most popular. Um, that's getting more difficult specifically for freelance writers because they're flooded with freelance writers. So they've been, you know, um, not approving people's accounts for that, you know, early on. So sometimes it takes like, you know, two, three, five, ten tries of submitting your, you know, kind of application to get them to approve you as a writer. Oh, wow. um, but I'm a huge fan of doing cold emails. And basically, you know, it's not necessarily, again, not the sexy way. It takes some time. You know, so many people... Um, they think it's like, oh, okay, I'm just going to like mail merge, you know, a hundred email addresses, send out the same template and hopefully I get, you know, one bite mm -hmm. and realistically you're probably not. Um, but I'm kind of an advocate of going to marketing agencies, SEO companies or businesses that you think have a need for a writer and send them a personal email, do a little bit of research on the person you're emailing, figure out what things they like, figure out what things that, you know, they're looking for help with, spend a little bit of time on their social media. So when you send an email, you can send something that's really personal, you know, hopefully you can build a little bit of rapport um, and get a sense of like, you know, for instance, when you emailed me, it's like, yo, what's up? I'm from the Northwest. Um, so you automatically have a little bit of rapport. You've got something in common and that's going to keep people from at the very least not deleting your email. It's like, okay, like maybe I'll feel this person out. But, you know, for most people that get pitched, you know, for freelance work or writing jobs, nine out of 10 of them are just going to be mail merge, template, horrible emails. So yeah. I think that there's a big opportunity if you can spend a little bit more time than everybody else and, you know, put that personal thought into it, show people like how you can help them and do it in kind of a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, instead of getting maybe one out of a hundred, you know, people like, you know, giving a bite, you know, you might get a response from, you know, one out of five. And, you know, maybe, you know, after you talk to 20 of them, you might, you know, start getting a, a well-paying job. So that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I approach freelancing. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. It, it, it reminds me of your, your blog post about how to basically, Sean has a lot of blog posts about how to reach out to people, how to, uh, reach out to influencers to get guest posts and stuff. And he, he's got tons of resources on his site about having the right uh, subject line and what to put in the email, just like what he's talking about. Kind of a warm, kind of a warm outreach approach. Okay, that's great to know. And what I'm kind of curious about and what other people are gonna be curious about at this point is, okay, how, can, how much can I realistically make if, let's say, like I have a good buddy who's corporate in Seattle and he works for Boeing and he came yeah. out to visit us in Thailand actually twice now and he's just like all right really set on being his own boss and you know he's trying to work out what can I do get started with remotely um, what you know obviously he has a degree you know so he can maybe do some high level writing how much can you make getting started how much could you make you know assuming you're working on it every day how much can someone realistically make you know, it's writing. all over the map because everyone's got a different background. You know, the person that puts in, you know, 40 hours a week versus the person that put five hours a week in, you know, they're going to have more success. So the person that's got a college, you know, degree in journalism is going to have more success from someone who's, you know, hasn't written a paper since college kind of thing. Um, but generally, I think that within, you know, three to six months, you can get to the point where you're making $3,000 a month. That's my goal when people join Location Rebel Academy is to get them to that point. Uh, okay. We have people... You know, for instance, uh, a little while back, we had a guy that uh, he joined on New Year's Day, January 31st. And on February 1st, he sent me an email and he was like, Sean, I didn't tell anyone this, but I like I had set a goal. I wanted to make four thousand dollars writing in my first month. And wow. he's like, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, it took until 1130 p.m. for the you know payment to come in on the last day. But I ended up making like it was like four thousand thirty two dollars and twenty eight cents or something through his writing. So he made four grand in a month in his very first month. Um, you know, granted, that's the exception, not the rule. But there's been plenty of cases like that that I've seen where people have done it. Um, there's people that are now, you know, a couple years into their business. They've got six figure writing businesses where, you know, they've built up all the relationships. So they have all the clients and then they hire out. Out, you know, other people to do the actual writing. Um, so this guy in particular, like he's hired out his mom, he's hired his brother, um, and they're all kind of doing the writing for him. And he's just doing dealing with the clients and finding the work. Um, wow. 
So, so there's all sorts of potential, especially as you start getting in, you know, you kind of go from SEO writing to basic blog content writing to B2B business writing up to copywriting, which is kind of the highest paid, you know, type of freelance writing. Um, and then for a lot of people, that's like what pays the bills and they translate that into kind of the sexy side of things where that's when you start working on the physical products, the membership sites, the niche sites, the things like that. So, um, you know, while, you know, Freelancing might be the way to make a little bit really quickly early on, you know, that gives you the freedom and the flexibility to pursue that thing that's going to make you a lot more money down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And I love how you uh, brought up the point where eventually you can start to make your own little mini agency and hire employees and become the boss and turn this thing that you've got going on into a more passive thing, which of course, that's, you know, the ultimate goal for every entrepreneur have multiple sources of different passive income going on. And then, you know, let's say you have enough, you know, base income doing the freelancing thing where you can leave your job and maybe kind of like how I did, uh, take six months, kind of, we saved up some money and kind of made the jump out to Chiang Mai, uh, Thailand. And there was the, uh, a marketing conference going on. The nomad summit was going on in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So we kind of were like, all right, we got some money saved. We kind of have an e-commerce store going on the side, an online hustle thing going on the side. But let's just take six months off and go to somewhere like Chiang Mai or Southeast Asia where you can live on thousand bucks a month, and maybe your freelance income is keeping your, you know, keeping you out there, as I like to say. Like you know, some people are yep. doing teaching English online, like whatever you're doing, keeping you out there. Totally. But you're having that free time to fully focus your time on your online business. So yeah, that's kind of well, that's kind of the plan that I'm doing and everyone that follows me knows kind of the Southeast Asia solopreneur plan, but yeah. Well, and I was the, like, I did the exact same thing. So I left my job and I ended up getting a offer from Dan Andrews of the Tropical MBA. So he hit me up as a blog follower and was like, yo, I'm looking to bring an intern out to Asia to help me, you know, part time, you know, run my business. And so he's like, I'll pay you 800 bucks a month. I'll pay for your basic living expenses. You work for me part time. I'll kind of teach you online marketing. And the rest of the time you're out there, you can have adventures or you can work on your own site or whatever. And so when I was living in Bangkok, that's kind of what I did. I worked for him and continued to grow the blog, I started doing freelance SEO to pay the bills, you know, not because I loved SEO, uh, but because I loved the life that it enabled me to, to have. Um, and so that freelance income and working with them, it gave me the opportunity to basically buy time while I grew everything else and got to the point where, you know, I could, you know, essentially work from wherever I wanted if I wanted to come back to the States or stay in Asia or whatever it was. And so, you know, I think our, our stories are, are very similar and it's one that I've just seen over and over and over again for the people that are willing to, you know, actually make a little bit of a leap. It's like, you can live super cheap, you know, create stories that you'll talk about for the rest of your life and build a business in the process. And I think that's, what's so cool about, you know, the internet and this type of lifestyle. Exactly. Exactly. Not only are we living so able to live such interesting lives and have these adventures and exactly have these great times, but we can have more free time to yeah build become online entrepreneurs which is which is the dream and f- for me like this whole podcast and youtube thing kind of happened by accident cuz like after i kind of made it out there and i was in uh, thailand for a year just making a little bit of money you know just getting by i was just like making videos to just document my my vacation just making vacation yeah. videos you know and yep putting putting videos or YouTube is just where you put videos. So after a while, people just started watching them and then eventually asking me questions. I'm like, oh, people want to know more about what I do. So I'm like, yeah. hey, maybe I should do some tutorial videos and do some articles and that, that, that turns into a podcast. I've interviewed, yeah, dozens of digital nomads. Anyways, if people want to know more, we could ramble all all night, but uh, actually morning for, morning for Sean, it's night for me. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, if, if you guys want to know more about all this stuff about freelancing, check out locationrebel.com. Also location rebel on YouTube. He's, uh, he's doing, he's doing great videos. Production quality is on point and, uh, yeah, he breaks it all down links below and yeah, you can find him, uh, location rebel. Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Listening to the Living That Life Digital Nomad Podcast. Hit the subscribe button on iTunes if you're a boss, and check out the YouTube channel for dope travel videos. Let's get it.